How do I use annotation groups? So annotation groups are used essentially for the same reason as name boundaries, which is to automate the drawing production process. Um, you don't have to use this one. I mean, there's there's a lot in here. You can make your own. This may have been a lot to throw at you just at once, but we'll, we'll take a closer look here um, in Open Roads. I'll go ahead and swap back over. So I'm in the design again, and we can, over here in our Explorer, see the Open Roads Standards tab. I've already got it open. And if we come down here, you notice you'll have libraries and then your active file. For now, I'm sticking with the active file, but realistically, you would most likely your company or whatever municipality you get a workspace from would have libraries set up and it would open roads would be pulling from these. But just for the sake of the demonstration, I will stick here. So I will go ahead and open, expand annotation groups, plan, linear, road. And here's the annotation group I'm going to go ahead and look at. So it's the one with a lot of options, but for the most part, all I want to demonstrate is how you can use it. And then I guess making a real quick, simple addition to it, and you can see the change happen in real time. So I will go ahead and annotate by going to drawing production. And notice I'm annotating in the design model. You can also do this in the drawing if you wanted to help declutter things. So I'll go to element annotation. I just wanna go ahead. You can either override your annotation group here and choose a specific annotation group, or you can just go ahead and do all elements and model. I'll go ahead and uh, demonstrate the override. I will go ahead and select that just happened to be the one I wanted. You could browse through them here, a data pointed to accept it. Locate elements. I'll select my center line and I will reset, which is alternate click to continue. So I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see now we have station ticks, station labels, curve labels, and much of the like. So. If you didn't necessarily want all of this, maybe you even have more than this, you can only include, you can have annotation groups set up to only include the specific things you want in the design, and then everything else can go in your drawing. So now I'll go back into the annotation group, turn on the display, and I'll really quick do, make a brand new annotation definition in here, add, Add new alignment annotation. And you may have to give it a second. There's already a lot in here that it's having to sort through. All right. So you'll now see that we have alignment annotation one here. I can rename it if I want by right clicking on it and there will be a rename option. You can also, once you have it highlighted, select it again to rename it. But seeing as it is being kind of slow right now, I may just leave it alone. But we'll come over here in the actual properties of it. All right. So here we have all of the properties that go along with the annotation group. Go ahead and make the window a little bigger so we can see everything. 
just for this demonstration, I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, I will keep keep it at increment increments. I'll do about 200 for what I'm going to do. I'm going to annotate with a cell. And then I will skip down to placement. And I will set the perpendicular offset to, we'll just go with 0.15. I'll choose my cell down here in the cell group. I'm just going to go down and do a power pole. And hopefully here in a second, yep, you'll see that in our preview over here, power pole symbol popped up. All right, so now that I've made that change, let me go back to my annotation over here. And you'll notice that it was automatically added. All right. So that's just a very quick look at annotation groups. Um, now I think I want to move on to our last question. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.